I dag så er jeg på den indonesiske ambassade her i Oslo, og jeg skal møte ambassadøren fra Indonesia, Todung Mulia Lubis, en av Asias fremste advokater. Vi skal snakke her i dag om forholdet mellom Norge og Indonesia, om Indonesia med dets 272 millioner innbyggere, om fremtiden. Dette blir spennende. It's quite an experience for me to be here in your embassy, Your Excellency Todung Mulya Lubis. Thank you for receiving me. Thank you for having me. Thank you. You know, uh, the man who introduced me to you was the Russian ambassador, Mr. Avinshvili. And uh, my heart jumped with joy when he did that because I've always been fascinated by your nation. Thank you. Now, where in Indonesia are you from, sir? I come from North Sumatra. Yes. I finished all my schools in North Sumatra till high school. After that, I moved to Jakarta to finish my law degree. And then I work in Jakarta ever since. But that's not the whole truth. You went to Berkeley? Yes. You did your PhD at one of the most prestigious law schools in America? Yes. You went to Harvard? Yes. You, you've done a lot of stuff, uh, sir. <laughs> well, that is something that I don't believe myself. Yeah. I've done that. But I did, you know, I was very lucky to have that opportunity because not many people have that opportunity. Yeah. So thanks God, yeah. This broadened my perspective, broadened my uh, understanding and now I believe I know a little bit more than other people, but yeah, things change very fast. You know, I, I was really impacted um, a few months ago. You took me out for coffee and, uh, and then we talked and, and I, I, I sensed your, your passion for people. You, you, you seem to be genuinely for people. I started my student days while I wrote poems. Poems? And, and short stories. Aha! And in my second years as a law student at the time, I joined a number of student movements. So that was the time when I believe I have to be close to the people. Yeah. And then also during my student days, I joined Legal Aid Institute, providing legal assistance to the poor, to the needy, without any fee. But of course, not all cases can be taken, but the cases that have impact yeah. the changes yeah. within the society, those are the cases that we did take at the time. Yeah. So that bring me closer and closer to the people. And I guess people have to have empathy. People have to have empathy and yeah, uh, solidarity. Yeah, because that's the way it should be. Exactly. Now, I, you know, I, I have a lot of friends in yeah. Indonesia. And uh, when I posted a photo of you and me yeah. on my public Facebook page, I got a stream of communication. Wow. Oh, he's the most <laughs> famous lawyer in Indonesia, they said. And I checked in Asia, you're even, your stature in Asia is one of the highest ranking uh, legal experts in, on the Asian continent, actually. Well, I did participate in a number of conferences, mm -hmm. seminars. I yeah, was one of the, yeah, uh, what they call travel, Seminaries, yeah, <laughs> yeah. but again, you know, I I have been working as a lawyer for more than forty years, Pastor Forty, 40 years. more than forty years. Yeah, started as legal aid lawyers and then becoming commercial lawyers, yeah. doing legal uh, commercial matters. However, in my law firm, which I have forty lawyers working with me, uh -huh. 
I always have one small division doing public interest litigations. Mm -hmm. That's the way I pay my tax to the society. Mm. I pay tax to the state, yeah. but I do pay tax to the society mm. by providing uh, public interest litigation without fee. Yeah. Yeah? Especially to the media, you know, to the reporters, journalists, and then to the laborers who have been dismissed mm. by the companies. And I thought, you know, I have to do it. You know, I have to keep reminding my staff mm. that don't have to be yeah, money machine. Mm. Yeah. Money is important. Mm. Yeah, you can make a lot of money by being a lawyer, but you don't have to be a machine. Yeah. yeah. You have to be you have your conscience. Yeah. yeah. That's what I keep telling my lawyers, my mm. staff. Yeah. That's that's wonderful. Now, um, in, in Norway, uh, the you know we, we we have a high standard of human rights, yes. uh, but there are weaknesses, and uh, I'm sure mm -hmm. the same would be the case in Indonesia. Yeah, uh, how important is the fight for human rights for you? Well, a lot of people believe human rights is not rooted in Indonesia. Yeah. When Suharto, the former president, the former president governed Indonesia for 32 years, human rights has always been perceived as Western construct mm. and not rooted in Indonesia. That brings me to yeah, one uh, research project at the time. And also when I did my PhD, I concentrated on human rights. Mm -hmm. And when I did my research, I found out that, well, in every cultural communities throughout Indonesia, we have human rights. Yeah. We have human rights. Yeah. And not only in terms of individual human rights, but collective communal rights. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I wrote my dissertation on human rights, and that was probably the first human rights dissertation written by Indonesians during Suharto times. Oh. Was that well received in Indonesia at the time? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I uh, that has been published in Indonesia in uh, U.S. Yeah, at the time, and also uh, translated. Yeah. And is this one of the books that this came is, out of it? This is one of the books, yeah. Uh, Political Corruption in Indonesia. This is one of the books, yeah. Thank you, you But gave it is, to me. This is the most current one. <laughs> most current one, yes. Yes. The latest publications. Yeah. I'm, I'm still working on another book. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so is, how is uh, the freedom of the press in a nation like Indonesia? Well, we have made a lot of improvement. Mm -hmm. In the past, under Suharto times, every media has to have a right to publish. Mm. They cannot just publish newspapers or magazines. Mm. But after the new reform order, we call it reformasi or reform, that has been abolished. Mm. So everyone can publish their own media. Mm. The freedom of the press is getting stronger and stronger. And I think in ASEAN or in Southeast Asia, so that's the organization for Southeast, yeah, Southeast Asian, Asian nations. Countries, yeah. Indonesia is probably the one that has the most free press mm. in the regions. Yeah. Um, of course, Norway prides itself as having a very free press, but some of some critics like myself would say that mm. there are problems here as well. So it's never perfect in any country. Yeah. Well, uh, of course, you know, the press has also uh, society, yeah, uh, as uh, what do you call it, you know, uh, object of publication. Of, of news, course, yeah? not only the governments, yeah. Yep. Now, so sometimes the pressures, the intimidations may come from the society be it from social organizations or uh, what do you call it, uh, companies, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
So uh, you have that, yeah. But again, all in all, I should say we enjoy press freedom. Yeah, we enjoy press freedoms, and uh, yes, there are civil claim filed in court. Yes, there are also criminal investigations, but I'm against criminal investigations. I'm against criminal investigation. Journalists should not be criminalized. Mm -hmm. But they, they can make mistakes and they can be brought to court. Yeah, Civilly, they can be liable, but not uh, in prisons, yeah? not criminalized yeah? Yeah. for whatever mistakes they made. That's very no noteworthy from you as a legal expert. Mm -hmm. um, I noticed that uh, you have, uh, although you stand up for the, the little man, mm -hmm. uh, the, the commoners, you have also defended in court in Indonesia uh, some pretty big media uh, channels. Yeah. So you want to defend their rights. Yeah. yeah. Well, I did defend uh, Time magazine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When Time magazine was sued by former President Suharto ah. at that time. Uh, Time magazine published alleged corruption of the families mm. of the former presidents. Mm -hmm. So that was the reason why he he was uh, why Time magazine was brought to court mm -hmm. by a former president Suharto. And then I also defended the Washington Post, yeah, uh, Wall Street journals, Indonesian uh, magazine called Tempo, yeah, mm -hmm. and few others, including uh, yeah, uh, TV media in Indonesia. Because I believe that democracy should have a free press. Mm. There's no democracy without free press. Yeah, uh, I believe what you call the fourth uh, branch of powers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you have executive, legislators, judiciary, and the fourth state, the fourth branch of power is the media, the first freedom. Mm -hmm. That's very interesting. Now, sir, um, you graciously invited me to your event last mm -hmm. uh, in in September yeah. uh, for religious dialogue between Indonesia yeah. and Norway, and I noticed that uh, there were uh, foremost uh, Islamic clerics, but also mm. a very foremost and uh, noble Christian Lutheran leader. Yeah. Uh, so how is the situation for religious freedom in, in, in Indonesia? Well, uh, let me yeah, probably take you to Indonesian history lessons. Yeah. yeah? Because Indonesia has been in communications or in interaction with so many religions. Yeah. Yeah. Chinese came to Indonesia with Confucianism. Yep. That was a long, long time ago. Mm -hmm. Indian with the Hinduism, mm -hmm. with the Buddhist. And then also you have Arabic. Mm -hmm. You have Spain came to Indonesia. You have uh, British. <laughs> you have Holland. Yeah. <laughs> Every one of them. Everyone. Yeah. Christian came. Yeah. Yeah. With their uh, trade mission. Yes. So they have all the yeah uh, place in Indonesia because some of them settled down in Indonesia. Mm. Now Indonesian at the moment recognize six official religions: mm. Islam, Protestant, uh, Catholic, Hindus, Buddhist, and Confucianism. Yeah. Yeah. But it does not mean there are no other religions. Yeah. We do have Baha'i there. Mm -hmm. We do have Jewish mm -hmm. in Indonesia. Mm -hmm. And of course, there's a tension sometimes, even within Islam. You have Sunni, you have Shia. Of course. Yeah. You have Ahmadiyah there. Yeah. <laughs> so that's very within tense. Christian as well. Yeah? Yeah. You have tension. But all in all, I should say, Indonesia respects the right to freedom, yeah. the right to religion. Yeah. Yeah? Freedom of religions. So I, I don't think there's a problem with freedom of religions in Indonesia, yeah. But again, you know, we have to, yeah, to keep, uh, yeah, uh, criticizing any, yeah, uh, violations, yeah, because it may happen, yeah. Uh, there are also people within, yeah, uh, 
Christian or within Islam who we can consider fanatics or fundamentalists. Yeah. You know? yeah. So, because I believe in plurality. Yeah. Yeah. I believe in plurality, and I would like to have all this religion, yeah, living together, you know, peacefully. Yeah, sir. Uh, although you're a Muslim, uh, I I'm, I'm not going to go into the specifics, but there was a, an instance where I asked you, and mm-hmm. and you 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 defended uh, uh, a Christian uh, yeah. against some in some matters, and I I noted that that mm-hmm. you 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 want to keep that balance. Yeah, sure. Because uh, after all, we are all human beings. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, no matter what religion you belong to. Yeah. Yeah. yeah? When I studied uh, human rights at University of California, Berkeley, one of my professors told me, "Passport does not mean anything to me, because we are all human beings. Yeah. At the end of the day, we are all human. Yeah." yeah? Whatever passport we hold, yeah, that's beautiful. It doesn't said. matter. Beautiful, sir. Beautiful. So uh, I uh, really feel that being an Indonesian, I'm very proud of, of course. You know, yes. I come from a country with more than seventeen thousand islands. Yes. More than three hundred ethnic groupings. Yeah. yeah. You have. Uh, a lot of religions, yeah, languages, cultural traditions. So in a way, Indonesia is a perfect place for, yeah, plurality. Yeah, yeah. In terms of religion, in terms of languages, in terms of ethnicities. So, I, I'm really proud of being an Indonesian in that sense. You know, the more I stay away from Indonesia, like. I've been here more than two years, uh, Pastor Yan. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah, I I become more proud of you miss being, home being an Indonesian. Yeah, yeah, I understand. I know how how big is you know Indonesia is. Yeah, two hundred seventy two yeah. million people. Absolutely. Yeah, and what what a what a center really an example of peace between people actually. Yeah, yeah, I think uh, Indonesia uh, probably is unique in that sense. Yeah. Again, I'm not saying there's no fundamentalism, yeah, there's no radicalism in Indonesia, but compare with other part of the world. Mm. Let me put it that way. Indonesia is more peaceful. Yeah. When you talk about Islam, Islam is more peaceful, more embracing, yeah, more open-minded, more tolerant, more moderate. Yeah? So I guess people have to look into Indonesia mm. in that sense. Yeah. yeah. yeah as a model, you yeah. know. Because, yeah, we managed to reconcile all the differences. Yeah. You know, one of my friends is uh, the pastor of a very large Pentecostal church in the middle of Jakarta. And uh, we'll echo what you say, actually. Well, I'm glad to hear that. Yeah, yeah. it's I'm true. I'm glad to hear that. Sir, I read prognosis that Indonesia by 2045, 2050, will probably be the fifth largest economy in the world. Well, with one note, that prognosis was made before COVID-19 pandemic. Yeah. yeah. yeah? Now, now, perhaps, you know, they have to yeah, uh, make some uh, reassessments. Mm. But still, Indonesia is a big country. With 272 million people, it is a big market. Mm. Yeah. Our economy depends not only on investment, be it foreign investment or domestic investment, but also domestic consumption. Yeah, yeah. So uh, that's why I keep encouraging uh, Norwegian companies to come to Indonesia. There are so many opportunities to invest in Indonesia, mm. be it in renewable energy, fisheries, and others. And now this year, you've actually established the Indonesian Norway Society. Yes. Yes. That's among others, you know, uh, to probably bridge the gap. Yeah. Yeah. Between our embassy and the Norwegian society. Mm. Because having 
diplomatic relations for 70 years already, Pastor Yan. This year, so, yes. For me, it is quite uh, probably uh, strange not to have Indonesian Norway society yeah. established. Because there have been so many Indonesians coming here back and forth, or even settled down here, married with Norwegians. Mm. And there are also many Norwegians coming back and forth to Indonesia. Yeah. And settled down there. Yeah. So diplomacy is not only done by the government, mm. by ambassadors with the staff. Diplomacy also done by the people. Exactly. That's why we have people to people diplomacy. Yeah. That's why I guess this is about time for Indonesia and Norway to have you know Indonesian Norway society. Yeah. So what areas do you think especially can we develop between Norway, Norwegians and Indonesians? Well, I would love to have more cultural exchanges between Indonesia. I and must say Norway. though, before you, I went, my wife and I were invited no. to your huge event in yeah. January at Gamlelusen in Oslo. Yeah. And that was the most terrific cultural show of Indonesia that I have ever imagined to see. Well, actually, we are planning to have another one, a bigger one, in June. Yeah, yeah but it was cancelled because of this COVID-19. Yeah. Because if we manage to have that, Pastor Jan, we have more uh, group coming from Indonesia, uh, eastern part of Indonesia, from Papua, West Papua, and then from uh, uh, Malukas mm -hmm. and East Nusa Tenggara. Mm -hmm. So you can be probably enriched yeah. by different kind of cultures from eastern part of Indonesia. But, well, uh, we have to reorganize that. <laughs> well, I, I hope and trust it will happen. But apart from uh, cultural exchange, other areas? Well, there have been that, not that many investment coming from here, mm -hmm. uh, Pastor Yan. Yeah. I know that you have oil funds here. Mm -hmm. yeah? mm -hmm. Oil fund has been invested in 500 for uh, fortune 500 companies yeah everywhere yeah uh, indonesia has received some yeah but i guess there are so many opportunities in indonesia but yeah it is not yet known by business communities here. Yeah. yeah so i'm hoping indonesian norway society can yeah bridge the gap mm. can uh connect people yeah. because our job is to connect the dots exactly yeah? now uh indonesian norway society society should connect the dot as well mm. between the business communities and yeah. i'm sure there are a lot of interests both here and in indonesia yes you know indonesia has two-thirds of their territory are waters yeah yeah two-thirds mm. so so fishing, talking, fishing yeah, must be big. Fishing must be big. Uh, offshore uh, mining, you know, oil and gas mm. mining must be very big. Yeah. And Norway has all the technology here. Mm. So uh, I guess it is only a matter of connecting the dots. Exactly. Yeah. That's interesting. Now, you mentioned the COVID-19 and the possible effects of that long term. Uh, it, it does show something about the need for peace in the world. Mm -hmm. uh, although COVID in itself, of course, is, is not uh, something between nations. Um, but there's so many opportunity, I mean, negative uh, things between different superpowers. Uh, how is Indonesia positioned in this? I mean, America, China, mm -hmm. Russia, Japan, and Indonesia itself being a, a significant nation. Well, we see this as a global pandemic, yeah. a global problem that need global solution. Uh, this is not a time for narrow nationalism mm. because if we don't cooperate with one another, mm. then the developed uh, underdeveloped countries or the middle income countries would be left behind. Yeah. Now we have vaccine yeah? uh, development in number of uh, countries. 
in UK, in uh, Germany, in Switzerland, in US, in Australia. I hope the vaccine would be manufactured and available to the market early next year, yeah. as what I probably read in the media. Mm. But what guarantee that the vaccine would be equally distributed? Yeah. Yeah. So the principle of equality, yeah, equitable access is important. Yeah. So that's uh, something that we have been fighting for. Indonesia has applied for the right to manufacturers. And Indonesia also is participating in clinical trial for some of the vaccines. Hmm. But what happened after the vaccine is being manufactured? Hmm. Will it be distributed evenly hmm. among nations? That is the challenge. Very much the so. Moment because I don't want to see other small countries left behind yeah. Yeah? because they do have the right to help. Yeah. Yeah? Americans does have right to help, yeah. Norwegian does have right to help, but other countries like Indonesia, Philippines, or Thailand, or uh, South Africans, Egypt, they do have right to help as well. Of course. So equitable, equitable access to the vaccine is very important. Yes. Yeah. That's uh, that has to be respected. Yeah, sir. I know that you 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 passed seventy now, <laughs> and uh, you you gave up your law practice in, uh, in Indonesia, and this is like your your probably your last uh, major commitment in Norway. So how long do you can we hope that you'll stay here? Well, uh, the terms is three years. Uh, Last year, yeah. So uh, by next year's, if everything goes as planned, then yeah, I should be flying home. Yeah. Unless you know there's an extension, yeah. Exactly. But yeah, nobody knows. Yeah. I pray for an extension. No, no, nobody knows. <laughs> yeah. But again, yeah, uh, I'm I'm very pleased to be here. Mm -hmm. This is beautiful country, beautiful uh, country, and very clean. Yeah. And very welcoming. Yeah, mm. I like the people here. Very friendly. So, this is my second home. <laughs> nothing. My second home. Nothing makes me more happy. <laughs> and I, I you, your lovely wife. I met her, and uh, she likes Norway as well. Oh yes, she enjoys Norway very much. Yeah. 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 And you have kids back home in Indonesia, right? I have uh, one daughter uh, and uh, one son. Yeah. Have they been and, able and, to visit? And granddaughters. Granddaughters. Yeah, they've been here uh, yes. two times already. Wow. Yeah, they've been here two times already. Well, that's great. It's a privilege. <laughs> well, it's certainly a privilege to have you in Norway and also that you would honor me by being on my show. It's my pleasure. It's Thank my, you so much, <laughs> sir. <laughs> Thank and you. I want to extend God's richest blessings on you and your wife and your, your kids and grandkids and oh. your nation. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.